It's 5 o'clock, and you're off the Cargo B Sky, and today we're excited to have as our guest Chipmunk, a well-known taxidermist from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And today we're going to talk about taxidermy. You know, what do you need to do to prepare your game for taxidermy? A lot of people don't know, or they always look it up because they're not sure. And different animals, species, things like that are a little bit different. So we're going to kind of get inside of that and try to figure out the ins and outs and what you should do. And with me, I got my dad and I got Daryl down there and Chipmunk right here. Thanks for coming, Chipmunk. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Wasn't a bad trip for you, was it? No, no, no. no. 167 the whole way? Just all the way. No traffic. I hear you. So tell us a little bit about how you got started because you, you've been doing taxidermy now for, for how many years? 30 years. 30 wow. years. 30 years is a long time. It, it is. is. It's a long time. But it's been time. a good 30 years. Nothing, That's right. No regrets. I guess it's good. It's good. No regrets. It's all been good. Do you get to hunt a lot doing taxidermist work? You you limit your hunting. I bet. You know, because when the season's going on, you got to be there to take it all in. I and bet. everybody else is hunting. You got to make your hunts. And uh, if you make an early morning hunt, then you get back to work. You know, they're, they're calling you when you used to when you're sitting on a deer stand. They give you a call. Hey, I got a deer. I need to get it to you. And then so it makes hunting a little harder for you. I bet. So you have to kind of pick and choose your time a little bit. I bet. That makes sense. That makes sense. What what made you get into taxidermy? Just the love of animals. Really? Just the love of the animals, just the love of the art. You know, because mm -hmm. you, you, you used to when I was young and I go in there, I see a deer mount, I look at that and I say, oh, my God, I'm gonna, that's something I want to do right there. Are you a good artist? I mean, can, you, uh, can you draw? No, I'm not you a can't draw. draw? No. So, so... Taxidermist is more of a, um, you just like the animals, you like? You like the animals, but you like the artistic part about it. It's uh, a person, I've known people that can actually draw and then, but can't not take an animal and put it together. Why um, do you, uh, I mean, what do you do different than, than other tax? I mean, is there anything you do different than anybody else that separates you from the competition? Or do you have a special little thing you do? No, them? no, we just. It's all uh, standard? It's, it's a standard deal, but it's uh, it's uh, you've got to know the animal. Yeah, the know details, what you're the on. small details, all the details of the animal, everything, whatever you're working on. Um, it's just like we done deer and stuff. Then we changed over, started doing a lot of African game. Mm -hmm. Well, you had to study the African game. Nothing works the same as a white-tailed deer. I got you. Um, you get anything across the water like that, and uh, it's entirely different. But as long as you study it and learn it. Then you, it's just, just like a mountain of white-tailed deer. Yeah, that makes sense. How, so, how how long did you do African game till uh, this point? We'd done it probably fifteen years. Was there a lot of it? Did you get a lot of? Uh, yeah, we got a lot. When you go to mountain crocodiles and uh, zebras, and you know, we started we mounted we mounted uh, cougars, lions. Not a lion. The uh, the leopards. We mounted leopards and. Uh, Bungos, a uh, lot of the plane game. A little there. bit of exotic stuff. Oh, over yeah. There. And because here, you know, we don't got nothing like that. But all the animals over there are colored up different. They're all distinctive. And it's kind of, I imagine it's completely different. Oh, what, it, is? it is? What's the right. what's the weirdest animal you ever mounted? The weirdest animal? I mean, animal? like, you've ever met a mounted a pet or anything? Well, you, well, I mounted a pet bird. Okay. You know, well, that's pretty weird. Mounted, mounted uh, cow that is actually somebody's dog, I that's believe pretty, what it was. That's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. You, believe a, you mounted a coyote that was actually somebody's dog. <laughs> yeah, he said, oh, this is a coyote, and I tried to explain to him on the back of the truck, no, that's not a, that's not a coyote. So you mounted somebody's dog, and they thought it was a coyote. <laughs> I made him look like a dog. I made him look like a coyote. <laughs> really? <laughs> we were through with him. So you never had anybody mount like a house dog or wow. anything? Oh, no, you, I get the calls. Is but, that against the law or something? No, not against the law. Really? It's just, just weird? It, yeah, they got things about them, feature, you know, features about them that they know. You know your dog. I love my dog. Yeah. I got a little wiener dog. I'm yeah. thinking. He might keep his he, eye one way mounted. or his, maybe get my know, dog mounted. Keep his mouth, you know, hold his mouth in a different direction. When you mount him up, you go. Makes kind of tough. Yeah. Hey, that's not my. Will you mount my wiener dog if it dies? <laughs> no. no when it dies, not if it dies. <laughs> yeah, when he dies. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking at us right now like, are you crazy? Uh, <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, there he but Boomer's down there like, yeah. uh, you're not mounting me, buddy. I'm just kidding, dude. Don't quit looking at me like that. Leave me out of this. He said. I got a question. How yeah. did they? How do you get like all these animals from Africa to you? Like they're gonna mount it because obviously they're not people from Arkansas. Mostly they're still natives. Well, all over. yeah, there's people from here in Arkansas, local people that go across the water to hunt. 
And the they name. go over and hunt the plain games, and there's taxidermists over there. When they get them, uh, it, the hunter, all he's got to do is pull the trigger. Okay. And then they cape them and out. And they cape them out over there and salt the skins and dry them, and they crate them up and ship them back. Okay. And then when they ship them back, we go through the USDA and get that all taken care of, and then they go to a tannery, and then they're tanned and sent to you. And it's just cake work from there, just putting a puzzle together. Yep, putting a puzzle together. Nice. Yep. Well, that's wild. It's crazy there's actually, you know, that many of that going on, you yeah. know, with those exotic animals. What do you – so So you got away from the big game. You said after a while you were like, all right, we need to we need to do something else. What you, would you decide to do there? We backed away from – we did – we were doing – between five to six hundred mounts a year, you're doing two hundred and fifty deer a year, three hundred birds, and African game and exotics out of Texas. You get a lot of that stuff. So we started backing away as we backed away from the bobcats and the mammals, and backed away from the African. A few years later, then we backed away from the deer and went strictly to the waterfowl and upland birds. And and the reason for doing that is you just said it was it's it's hard on your physical body. You know, it's tough. What yeah. is what's hard? The uh, Handling of the high, this heavy. Oh, you're talking about the big stuff? Big stuff, I yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, a couple of back surgeries kind of lower you, kind of slow you back down. Did you get a back surgery because of taxidermist? Or? Uh, it didn't help. Really? So it you're bending help. over all the time? You stay humped over, picking up stuff all the time, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Never thought that in a million years. I didn't years. think that through either, yeah. Yeah. I can see that, especially because the highs are heavy. Because when you stick something in the deep freeze and that sucker's heavy, I pulled my first one, my second surgery was called up. Was putting a deer in a, in a, in the in the freezer. Wow! And uh, there's too, there's too much meat left on them. You know, they leave the half the neck in there, and they got the whole head and the whole hide. You even get the testicles with it. Really? You know, they put it all in there. So you're sticking it in the freezer and pulls your back out. Oh wow! Hmm. So, so you so now you move down to the waterfowl, small you know small birds. I mean, do, is there is that all you do now? Strictly waterfowl, or do, is there any exceptions on anything? No, we just do with all the waterfowl, do the turkey birds. Turkey? Uh, upland bird, yeah. We do them. So, wow. B Scott, you trying to figure out you trying to figure out if he's the man for you? I'm trying to figure out if there's any loopholes here for sure. I got <laughs> I got a ten pounder on my mind and I'm thinking, well, ain't gonna well he just said he ain't gonna do no <laughs> fish. What about elk? We've done plenty of elk. Lots yeah. of elk. Yeah. Well B Scott got an elk in uh New Mexico that Yeah, it's being, actually being mounted. They're actually fixing mounted. some tines too, because it, it was all busted up. Yeah. The tines, you know, that's that's fixing them back. Them's a you know, that's the chore. I bet. Well, what's the process on that like? Uh, well, it's a long process, really. You, you got to mold it. You got to mold one side and go to the other side and have it put in. But I use a company here locally named Benchback Reproduction because they build wow. a reproduction antlers. Oh, really? Like, yeah. They can take a set of antlers of any kind and make a reproduction off of it. Really? Yeah. Any can they do it based off of, a, say, a picture? Yep. It don't even have to be the real, real deer right there? Nope. Don't have to I don't see some of your pictures back here. Yeah, let's, let's look at You got a really nice place. Those turkey mounts are sick. Yeah, those, know it. yeah. Unless it's these ducks from our sea duck hunt. Yeah, that all looks really, really good. So, so let's say oh, I'm the, out duck hunting, right? And no, yeah, he's a big duck hunter now. <laughs> yeah, I'm out duck hunting. And so those are the one I, wife harvest there. Those are nice. Yeah, they're nice birds. If I'm if I'm out duck hunting and I want to get a bird to you. What's that process looks like? So what is what is what is the guy that's listening to this? Is like I want to get a duck mounted. Well, he shoots one. He's like, this is the duck I want to get mounted. What's that process look like? Well, it's uh, take care of it in the field. You know, it's uh, what do you have to do? Well, I would <clears throat> once they get the duck in their hands, uh, look it over. You know, if it, don't take one that shot twenty yards from you. Yeah, but right. flying all out in the water, and then so you need a treetop. You want it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you need that one. Out. You, uh, so you, you should have shot at it. You know, you, you got wanna, one pellet in it. You want an easy duck to mount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to, you know, you, you come from the end of a shotgun. You ain't gonna look too yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> Those feathers have a lot of stuff, so it's, you know, it's you got some advantage with feathers. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the inside part of it. Yeah, and I, I man, I got my duck here on. It's a close, you know. How close did he shoot him? 20 yards. I, hmm, ain't much left of him. It's going to cost you a little more money. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. I got pretty much add feathers. Right? So, <clears throat> so they bring the duck to you, you freeze it, or they need to freeze it? Yeah, when, when they kill it, they need to uh, take it and uh, take care of it. And uh, good, the better the field carrier is, the better prep job and yeah. you know species that you bring to us. And then they uh, put it in a freezer 
and then get it to your taxidermist as soon as you can. What's your uh, turnaround for it? Turnaround time right now, we're still like 12 months out. Really? So oh, wow. Anybody bring the bird in right now, don't look for for another 12 months back. Yeah. So so once they mm. get the bird, they, you know, you don't want to just throw it in the freezer. You got to wrap no. it in newspaper, right? No, no, no newspaper. No newspaper. No newspaper. No, no, newspaper. no, no, no trash bags? No. Nothing. Yeah, you want to put it in a plastic container. Plastic container. Plastic okay. bag, two and a half gallon freezer bag. Walmart bags work great. Just roll them up good and tight, and mm -hmm. fold their head over their arm on their back, and and you can put him in a freezer. Sometimes you bring him in and got his head stuck out this long, and you know, like my God, it's, he's he's nose diving somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it and he raised it to you. You got to thaw him out so he can fold his head back over. In other words, he can fall in a freezer and get his head broke off. Yeah, then you got a whole another process. Yeah, whole another process of putting that head back on. So wow. Well, how how many how many uh, waterfowl mounts do you think y'all do a year? Well, we average between right now we're we're looking at. We're around between 350, 375 mounts for this year. And is it just you doing it? Is there uh, no, no, you no, got a crew of people? Yeah, that's some men working there. Okay. okay so there's nice. some skinning, some some skinning, some mounting, stuff like that. That's right. I mean, our averaging those are a lot bit over one a day. Those yeah, that's a lot. Of deer. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, over well, over one a day. I mean, technically. No, so, try to try to. Used to when I was younger, I'm about 15 ducks a week, but we started every morning at 4:30. So, mm -hmm. but I ain't young no more. So you stayed pretty busy. Huh? <laughs> you just, yeah. just passing some time now. So yeah, yeah. So the guys that were there now, if they average eight ducks a week, they're doing good. So, so, you, so I didn't mean hmm. cut y'all off, but I'm just fascinated. Uh, you mount all those deer? All the ones hanging on those racks are to be mounted. All the ones on them carts have been already turned into European mounts. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow. That's so you mount 250 shoulder mounts. And then plus you're probably doing a 75 to 80. I see an elk up there. Yeah, we got elk, elk, fallow deer, exotic. Do you still do elk or no? You, you no, don't, we don't. No elk. No elk. Okay, you just said no. that. Never mind. Very yeah, yeah, We've yeah. been doing all that. Yeah, I see all that. Yeah. And then that <laughs> out there, you know, you go out there and you, that's a 600. So you got an elk. And that deer's 585 inches. Wow. Holy cow. So it was the guy. That's that, an absolute freak. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a ranch hunt. Yeah. Yeah. So they got guys that like to go to the places that they're going to come home with something. That's right. But you got to pay about an inch, too. Oh, wow. I oh, bet that's yeah. about a $15,000 year. That there actually $15,000? I don't know, brother. That's $75,000. Oh, yeah. heck no. <laughs> ain't a deer I want to shoot I that costs that much. The man that got to shoot it, uh, he, he got it early in the season with Cobo. Actually owned those three deer up there, too. He shot all three of those? Yeah, he shot all three of those. <laughs> What's he do? Oh, what does wait. he do for a living? So <laughs> he's a big old guy. Overseas. <laughs> No, he got deep pockets. <laughs> oh, he definitely does. He definitely has deep pockets. There's some major bone right there. <laughs> There's a lot of bone, yeah. They, but going to Cobra when that deer was available, but nobody wanted him. And uh, we got him at a good deal. And later on, you know, the the, uh, the place that had it, I knew the guy. He owned the ranch, and he said, man, I'm a man of my word. He said, I, I just got off for 75 k for that deer, and your buddy's going to get to shoot it for a lot less. I said, oh, Lord, well, why would you do that? He said, well... It's time of the year we needed some money to finish our lodge out. I said, oh, that's a good reason, I suppose. But mm. send him a little bit of money back, say, sorry, I got to take a better offer. <laughs> but he turned down the 75K and took about the 30K. Correct. Wow. I, I wouldn't do that one. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. I, the fact somebody wants to pay $75,000 shoot a deer blows my mind. Oh, it, it blows my mind. I mean, there's again, nothing in But then again, yeah. you got to think about it, too. That kind of money, <laughs> they're out of things to do. Right, if you're willing to throw seventy five thousand a deer, I mean, you're probably at a kind of wealth where you're kind of bored. I, I don't know. I you mean, know? like, but how you're shooting a seventy five thousand dollar deer? I mean, it's in a pen, right? You still got to write a check for that. I mean, seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah. I'll just make a fake one for a lot cheaper. It's the same thing. <laughs> well, you don't get your you don't get your photo shots. You got to have the photo uh, shots but, of it. I to mean, me, I would make a fake one. But, say, that would cost me. Yeah, but y'all also you, ain't got eight billion dollars in the bank. Yeah, but like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. When, when you see that, like deer, that guy that has eight billion, don't care. He's listen, like, listen, I want to go shoot it for seven. When you see somebody with that, deer, like you gotta make think. Well, they didn't do anything for that. Yeah. Every it's, time it's not like shooting like a 185. Every time I see a deer, yeah, like, like a, just I a agree. 185, I simple think, 185. You're like, okay, he did something crazy for that deer. Yeah, he worked yeah. hard for that deer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy went up there with his good as coffee about 8:45. The deer walked out at 8:50, which is still cool. I mean, I guess if I had the money, I probably would do it. So, I don't know about saying 5,000. I give them talking rights. Yeah. You know, look at my dad. Yes, I, I don't know. It's a different class of people, I guess. 
Anyway. I mean, that's almost anyway. as much as a, it as a it's, it's not it's the same. It's different. I'd rather go on public land and shoot a 150. Yeah. I'm saying you'd be, you'd be proud. You'd be like, man, that's a this deer. I don't know. But they, but they do. I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. It's still cool. I, mean, I don't know. It's cool, but it's not cool. It's I don't know. What's we'll baked this later? I <laughs> yeah. know that. It, it, yeah, it, it's really, it, it's really, it's really, it goes very deep. It's taking over the podcast. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> it like, just blows our mind. We're back. Let's go back to the ducks. <laughs> All right. Here. Let's yeah. go back to okay. the All right. I got, I got a question. This is this is a serious question. All okay. Right. So, you know, there's some there's some yahoos that bring some ducks to you. Mm-hmm. And while yahoos, I'm talking about someone like me that just shoots everything. So, if what's the, what's the, so you ever turned one down where somebody brought it? Like, I want to get this mountain. You're like, there's no way. Does that, does that happen a lot? It happens. What 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 draws that line of I can't do this? What's what's too bad? Like I know well, broke wing, you can do a broke wing. Well, yeah, like you, you you could fix a lot of stuff. Uh, we fix stuff when I'm having the duck. And I got a picture of one duck in hand and his head over here. Okay. Now this is a, a this is a cro- this is a uh, a cross duck. Yeah, one that you probably never get opportunity to shoot again. Yeah, and so uh, I just tell them, look, I, I'll put it together the best we can yeah and you, they have to accept it the best you can but, yeah and most time we uh, i mean you, you can do a lot of stuff with feathers yeah and we have made them where you really couldn't tell that it even happened yeah but if somebody brings in a green head it's like oh you're like dude just go shoot another green head you can do that yeah you can shoot another one <laughs> yeah that's not <laughs> that's not the main thing <laughs> but he got a band on him and said well i guess he's got a band on it we'll take the band off, band off. Put it on. <laughs> we'll take that band off put it on the next one yeah put it on another one yeah yeah, I just wonder. Do you ever do you ever deal with like hard headed people that just aren't satisfied with anything in life, and they're like they get their mount and they're like, man, I just wish that you know he'd have been doing this or do do do, or to give you a hard time ever. Like, do you ever run no, those people? No, I just run them off. Yeah, yeah. that's just well, like, take your deer and get the hell out of here. You know, I just tell them, hey, uh, we can only do so much. If we can't help you, then we ain't the tax endurance for you. You know, no, so I'll just sell your duck yeah. to somebody else. You don't pay. Do you have <laughs> Do you have mount for sale? No. Oh no, I I don't have I I, I got have, some great big old walls do, and I can't kill nothing. Do you uh do so you do have like where they just don't come pick their stuff up and you sell them? No no we uh we are you trying to buy you trying to buy my mounts man? No I'm just asking the question more thorough than the way you. Ask I want a mount like that one day. That that's pretty sick. You have nothing we can we can buy from you. Oh you can buy that Cape big old Cape buffalo in there. I had a lot of deer when we quit doing the deer. I sold all the deer. Yeah, because we need some uh, stuff for the buffalo. So he has a he has a big walls, right? I house. can't, I but can't he can't, can't kill anything to like put on them. I actually would kill me if I came on with that. <laughs> like it does, like <laughs> it's, he, it's not that you don't kill stuff, <laughs> but like you don't want to see five points and stuff like that <laughs> on, on the wall. Yeah, no, you know. Well, yeah. I got I got two elk hunts, Jim, this year. So hey, we if do I have. Kill, elk I, don't, I don't I don't have any room. I was, my my scenes aren't even close to big enough. I'm getting it mounted. I was hoping to kill an elk last <laughs> yeah. year, but I wasn't able to kill one. Now B Scott's gonna have an elk. Put on I have, yeah, you I put you put mine in your house and oh, just tell cool. people it's you probably could. a three. Oh, I'll be glad to do it. <laughs> it's cheaper that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude told me like twenty one hundred dollars. It's like a it's like a three forty inch for one bull. That's a good bull. Get him mounted down low enough. You know, every time at night time, you can give him a kiss before you went to bed. <laughs> kiss him on his nose. If I get it, my, my kids will be on it, riding. It. Yeah. 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 Does, does that water down. buffalo have birds on his nose? Uh yeah. Them birds, are, like those birds there, Dang. you'll see them on African. That's animals. nice. You'll yeah. see them on the uh, giraffes around. The, absolutely. Absolutely. How much yeah. you want for that mount? I I got it on the internet for five grand. Five grand. And that's her deal because that cabinet base right there, solid walnut with all that. I had that lady to fix him uh, to fix See, could, the big. See, that's a beautiful I, mount. I would like I, to have that mount, but I didn't kill it. So, like it's a lot kinda, of people like to buy stuff they didn't mount. I just sold yeah. some African mounts that you know people want to put just, in their office. So decorate. somebody killed that that, that killed it and didn't nope. pick it up or no, what? sir. Uh, uh, that's a set of reproduction antlers. Oh, be damn. And that's a hide I bought from up north from another taxidermist. So it's a really good cape. And then I put it together and had a base built, and then I had a lady to make the pitch photo to the top big five. I'll be there. So is there like a place where you, where taxidermists get together and buy capes and stuff and trade capes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I, talking to the taxidermists I'm using in New Mexico, that's kind of what it seems like. It yeah. seems like y'all kind of just like, hey, I'm looking for a cape. Do you happen to know where one is? Mm-hmm. And then y'all kind of send them back and forth kind of deal. Yep. W- yep. W- when are you getting your elk back? Uh, it should be pretty soon. So is it, uh, it's getting mounted in New Mexico? Yeah. yeah. I got you. Local. Yeah, yeah, I think the guy that was hunting with us mm-hmm. um, was a kind of a taxidermist. He was a taxidermist, mm-hmm. and he had fixed antlers. See, if I kill one, he's got it around the top of the truck. Well, he was he was he All was busted back. up. Oh mm-hmm. man, that's what I want. I think it'd be a cool picture. Yeah, you, gotta, cool. you gotta find them first. Yeah, that's a, that's a home. See, I got two trips. I, if I can't find one in two trips, I got a problem. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> man. 
So out of out of you know, I know it's all water fountain. I don't, I know we keep going back to the other stuff. Okay? That's fine. Just bear with us here <laughs> because it's all interesting to me because I like killing it all. Yeah. You know, so other than birds, what was the most enjoy like? What did you enjoy mounting big game wise the most? Like what what may, kind of pushed you to to as an artist, I guess in a way to make it look the best. Um. Uh. We got into mounting to Afri- uh, uh, exotics out of Texas, and I just kind of like, man, this is different. You're kind of unique, you know. It's not the same old. And not the same old. And I thought, and I got to watching some of the sh- hunts that's over in Africa, and then I got got into mounting a few pieces, and I thought, well, what's better better to go over and get live reference, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. Kill him and drop him on the ground, get up there and take your photos and stuff and study the animal. And I got the Lincoln, man. This ain't no different, but they're just unique. unique yeah, the different color patterns. Are you the first generation or second generation? Like, did your dad? No, I'm the only oh, one. So you, you started? I started. Okay, I got yeah. you. Do you have children? Yeah, I have a daughter. Is your daughter involved in your tech service? No. She was involved in it when we, she was young. And then I told her, you go on and be a nurse somewhere. <laughs> or she wasn't good at it, huh? <laughs> you said you she, said it's not for the back. She wasn't good at it or what? Uh, no, it's not that. It just I felt like she needed to try something different because this was, you know, she did a little bit of short thing. Oh, I so got you. She, she wasn't went, physically built to do this. No, she wasn't physically built to I do this. I got you. But she you. loved the bluts and the guts part. Oh, know? she did? Oh, yeah. She's that's all into cool. it. I think a nurse would be a good job for it then. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that's, yeah, that's fitting. Yeah. That's <laughs> fitting. I said, go be a nurse. You don't, you're already in the blood and guts. You might as well get it on and make better money. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. For sure. So you don't make good money doing this? Oh, uh, yeah. We make good. We yeah. do good. I figure you do. Yeah. So yeah. doing that many amounts a year, you know, it seems like y'all y'all do a good volume of them. It ain't yeah. like the few here and there type of deal. It seems mm. like a real. Has the local politics, the way the way the world is now, I mean, it's been going downhill for the last six, seven, eight years, nine years, ten years, it seems like. Um, has it affected your business? No. Mm-mm. Okay. No, I had, it, it hadn't always, bothered us. Because. You know, the, the sportsman, the outdoor guy, he's always going to hunt and fish, mm-hmm. you know, no matter how bad it gets. So that's always been really fortunate for us. And he's always going to keep his trophies. And he's going to mount. He's going to put that trophy on the wall. Now, he might. I've seen clients come in that that really don't need to be having this spending that money on a map, but they're gonna spend that money on that map. Yeah, they, that that is a if it's a buck deer, it's a trophy deer, and sometimes people don't get to hunt birds as much as they like. So when they harvest a bird, they're gonna put him deal in the wall. Yeah, they're gonna put him in the wall. I got three deer in the freezer. We still have it dropped off at of taxidermist. Um, then I would think I'd get them on down <laughs> because they're gonna be booked out a long time. Yeah. yeah. I just, the same way, the same way, oh, I have nowhere to put it but when I shoot one, but it's, it's getting on. I'm getting mounted. Well, I thought you were going to put it on my wall. It is going on no, your oh, wall. Okay. If, you. if you're white, you're going to put, it, you're gonna put oh. it on his wall? Yeah. Me and you're going to put RLs on his wall? Absolutely. Just, just, like, just like he's messing with us about those fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You use <laughs> fish for pictures. He's going to look at my elk every time yeah. he's in his house. I'm going to text him, hey, hey, give my elk a kiss for me. <laughs> I say, I sure will. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. You know, I've seen where you've won some awards. Yeah, we won quite a few awards. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, back when it started, back in the, well, I guess 30 years ago, in the 90s, 80s, uh, taxidermy world was kind of a whole different world in itself. You know, there's a lot out there you didn't know. You just thought you go to the taxidermy shop, but there's conventions, there's world there's the world competition show, like it's going to be held every two years. It's going to be held this year in Ohio. Uh, all that does is help promote the taxidermy business and to help person help a person that's uh to better himself you know it's a good place to go take respectful criticism uh you can win all kind of awards you can win in the, in the world trump in the world shows you can win the gold medal and the silver and the bronze or whatever they uh it just makes you that much better to produce a better product for your customers now there are those out there that don't want no respectful criticism, and you tell them something, you hurt their feelings. But in yeah. order to get better, mm-hmm. you need to you, know, you need to you pass on calls. something good for your clients, and then when you want to raise your prices, make money, you raise your prices because they're going to pay for quality. Yeah, yeah. That's right. and experience. And experience, they're going to pay for it. That's right. But if you don't go give them, I mean, not pick people a mounted ear and they bring it right from their shop, bring it to my shop, say, hey, this thing thinks. What can you do? 
I said, why, where'd you take it? And they tell me where they took it. And I said, why did you not bring it here? Well, I saved a couple hundred dollars. I said, no, you did, because you're going to cost 900 more dollars. So they spent 900 at my shop, and they spent 500 over here. That's right. So they didn't save no money. That's right. Like, yeah, it cost you. It cost them. And yeah. the same thing with birds, you know. You do the same thing. You, you really got to do your homework on where you, you know, take it to. People don't learn that until until they get your age. They yeah. get older. Yeah. I mean, you just experience. I mean, you know? you're saying that, and I say the same thing. You know, my son does things that I would never do, but I'm a lot older, right? You know, and you're a lot older, so it's hard to to get people to understand that. You know, it's just an age thing. Yeah, the young, the younger generation really don't understand it. Yeah, uh, the old timers, they know, son, you're going to get what you pay for. You, you know, yeah. just don't, you know. And always buy what you want because if you don't, you're going to buy it. You, you, you're going to end up going, buying it. You're going to yeah. end up with that gun. Yeah, right. You might as well buy it from the beginning. Absolutely. And yeah. I feel like too, and, like tax I mean, you cut you off, but like you're not paying for it all up front most of the time, right? They're paying a deposit. No, you're it's paying it up front. Yeah, Yo, you make them pay it up front. Yeah, yeah okay. he's, a, he's a good tax. He's, he's a good one. You know, he's, 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 yeah. no. he has experience and the you know the background to be able to do that so when they drop it off they're paying the whole thing up front they sign a contract we tell them how far we out and everything if you want to leave it we'll be glad to take it yeah but uh yeah that's even better yeah and they and i ain't never had anyone unhappy with amount yeah uh, well sometimes you have people that have a deer mounted and they don't run a, they don't they don't see nothing but horns you know that's yeah. the most i think when they see that i got my deer i got the horns you know but they don't see all the scars and the fighting scars and stuff. So when you stretch a hide over a styrofoam mannequin, there's no give there. Yeah. Your natural skin, you know, you, it's, it's, it's movable, flexible. Yeah. Yeah. They don't see those scars. So when you stretch it over something and mount it, well, the scars show up. Yeah. And But they don't see that until you pick it up. And then they say, well, I don't remember that. And I said, well, you don't remember nothing but horns anyway. Yeah. You're too happy. You're looking at horns. It's like, it's like all I got to know one thing is – are these or are they not your antlers? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's all I got to know. But I think the scars be yeah. kind of cool to me. That is like, cool. Like, dude, this, this deer is a battler. Like, you know? Like, ha- has anybody ever brought you, like, something illegal? Like, something illegal? Like, like okay, that's ear hold. Like, that's an illegal deer. Or that's an illegal something else. You're talking about spotlight? <laughs> yeah, like, like, do, like well, or do you ever question it and say, you know, hey, like, this seems like you ear hold it with a twenty two mag. Yeah, you might see something you know, a little on little unease, but I said, well, uh, you got a license number, you got a check-in number, I'm all good, because you got to answer the questions, not me. Yeah. yeah. So I don't police it, but uh, we didn't back in, and uh, if they killed something, and you know, they got a Arkansas license number or out-of-state license number, you, uh, you know, stuff coming from out of state is different from in-state. You got to have it deboned and brought in, you know, they got That's the right. regulation, so... Somebody bringing something in like that, no, you better reject it. Mm-hmm. But if it's inside Arkansas and you shot, we, you bet, as long as you got a license number and you got a confirmation number, it shows you check that dude in, the taxidermist should say. Yeah. Now, I got Game you. and Fish is looking for somebody. My books is open. They ask me if a question, if they want to know that, hey, did so and so bring a deer? I said, yes, sir. I had one deer taken in all, all 30 years. Really? So, so how, how often does that happen? Or so, you know, I mean, Game and Fish come to you. Uh, not very often. Not okay. very often. They got. They normally have a reason. They they like if you know somebody out here are done. They got word of somebody shooting a deer. Right. And you know how word gets traveled. So they, they say start, no. And it's a trophy deer, man. It's a big trophy deer. So when they come, they they start searching taxidermy shop. Mm-hmm. And they'll you have you got this deer. So and so check the deer in. Yeah. Tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's there. Come and get it. That's right. I got my money. It's his problem then. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like the way you think. I mean, hey, it ain't your fault. Now I'm going to know why. Yeah, but you can't control it. Yeah, yeah. I would take the money up front, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's starting to make more Plus, sense. I guess, hey, I guess now, now, now I think about it, too. Like, if you don't take the money up front, they might not never come back and get it. You don't waste well, your you time. You take a deposit, man. You, you got to put all that money into your labor, your, yeah. your workers, and buying materials and stuff. And so if you just take a deposit, that other half might be hard to collect. Yeah. So when I already got mine, so. If you want to take 10 days to come pick it up. Yeah, or a year to come pick it up, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't come pick it up, I'll sell it. Yeah, after you don't come pick it up, I'll be selling them too. <laughs> so a good condition, a good condition green head comes in. At, you know, it's not tore up. It's in good condition. How much would you reckon in roughly the price would be? 425 425 That's not bad. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Good bird. And you can bring a bird in that's got damage. A lot of times you can... You can uh, you can fix it. 
fixed. A lot of times you can fix stuff. We have a box sitting over there with, uh, we get birds and we, if, uh, we might clean some to eat. Well, he's got a good looking wing, cut the wing off, throw it in the box. Uh, as long as you ain't got nothing that's gonna smell. And you save all your extra feathers. So somebody comes in with a duck and he got shot off the first two primaries. Well, you can take them and splice them and put it back on there and they'll probably never, probably never see it. Probably won't even be able to tell it. Yeah. When you so we, you just mix and kind yeah, of yeah you splice something together and put them together like yeah that's pretty cool that is awesome yeah. I give that gives you like options as far as you know taking in wounded like really messed up yeah and I have a, like a whole freezer uh, just duck feet only you know we take a duck we inject our feet on our birds ever they, they come apart we inject them because we want them to look still full and alive and uh, so if somebody brings me one in it's just mangled up I just swap out another foot. And, we got a good pair of feet, and he's a pretty bird. So everybody's yeah. happy. Everybody's happy. And that's what makes you happy, huh? <laughs> that makes me happy. That's right. So, is there uh is there any like fact, like fun facts that you know that that's about the animals that like most people don't know? Like any, any weird little? Oh yeah, you run across all kind of stuff. Uh, birds are no oh, birds. You know, you, you if you bring them in fresh, you know, but you can show the customer, hey, you. you He's mangled up. We're gonna work on the side of him. Work. We work from the inside, and then we work from the outside. So we can fix a lot of stuff. We can repair bones and bones, and, huh? Yeah, fix a lot of bones. Fix a lot of wires inside there. And make a bone, and it you'll never know it. So and the person got it. So that's how you mine. mount a duck. I mean, it's not, I did, you I don't, you it don't was, skin it and put it on a foam. I mean, can't, yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah, we skin it out. Completely skin it out. Invert the wing. Take the head out. We put new heads in them. Put styrofoam bodies. We take the feet. Inject the feet. Put them back in. Paint them when everything's put together. But every, that bird is completely stripped on the inside. The fat is taken off on the inside of the bird. Everything. He's clean as a whistle. He's just clean. There. You see the quills of the feathers move. So once you position him on the bird and you put your caulking and stuff like that around your joints and wire that whole bird back up, and once his skin dries, he's there. Feathers don't move or nothing. Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. So, there's so, nothing inside that bird reel. Except the only thing on that bird reel is his bones and skin and his feet. His bones? Mm-hmm. Which is his, his wing wings. bones? Wing bones. I got you. Wing bones and leg bones. I'll be so, there. So Artificial what's, necks. You ever find anything crazy inside these birds? Like something just, something it, you like wouldn't oh, expect? Yeah, we find stuff that they might have, some stuff that they eat, you know. Like sometimes they have a big crawl and you want to kind of like, hmm, wonder what he's been eating. Yeah. Just, Anchors up, find inside. You find turtles, 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 Turtle. and duck. little tiny snakes, and all different things. Wow, wow, wow! I know that. So I said, man, I wouldn't have never thought he would eat that. Then you find find a bird with just a. I opened up one other day. He had acorns from underneath his mouth all the way down his throat and into the craw. I don't even know how he got that many in there. Wow, <laughs> so that's thought, crazy. Oh, wait, how many can he? How many acorns can you get in a duck? <laughs> wow, well, you hey, you'd be able to figure it out though. It's like that tin tail. I should have counted them. <laughs> yeah, this, this bird got thirty three acres in here. <laughs> yeah. I get turkey come in. I had a hen turkey shot from out of state, and uh, so we opened her up. And I got to look, and I said, "Well, I'm wondering how how many eggs she might have. If she has any eggs in her, well, sure enough, she did. I found the one that she's fixing to lay the next day, and the next eight that she was going to lay were all in order in order." Down the uh, down the egg canal, really. So just kind of like chickens. Yeah, you, a hen, you said a hen this turkey. Big egg looked like yeah, okay. Hens. Tomorrow she's gonna have this egg laid, and then the mm-hmm. next day this one starts, and then this one starts, and this one starts. Hmm. Like, That's wow, pretty cool. She's gonna have twenty eggs. So how so how long are you gonna do this? Are you are you, are you gonna retire anytime soon, or uh, you try you know you'll sell I your guess. business or what no, you got going on? We just gonna sell the that we're in a big building right now, ten thousand eight hundred fifty square foot. 12,050 on the outside. Uh, we're just going back down size. And uh, I got a young man that works for me, been probably going to be working there for a long time. I'm Think you going to sell it to him? or? No, nah, he doesn't want to own it. As long as the, we pay for the building and the supplies. He well, don't want the responsibility. Yeah, he, don't, no. he don't want the liability. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I just want to keep he just, uh, He likes birds. to come in and he does comes in, he does a great job. And uh, he's still a young man. So he's got 15 more years. So. Oh, wow. So I said, well, yeah. I'm not going to be there, but I'm going to be around somewhere. Yeah, I hear you. So it'd be good for him to come in. Well, y'all's work looks remarkable. It looks really good, you know, from everything I've seen. You know, uh, the attention to detail is, is definitely there. 
I think my favorite mount I seen was that water buffalo. I can't with, with the birds. It's for on sale. It. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I know that. <laughs> Five thousand dollars. Hey, hey, we trade a couple uh, ten pounders. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Ten what uh um what mistakes do you guys normally make as a taxidermist? I mean, what's the number one mistake that a young man makes that's learning to taxiderm? Or or, or I mean, what's the most common mistakes that you guys make? No, oh, like we built boats. We know what we screw up. We're like, here you go. Yeah. Uh, like on. Like on a bird, it's just. Um, is it rushing the project? Is it? Is it? Um, I mean, what's the biggest mistake you guys make? I mean, I know there's a list of mistakes. Oh yeah, you have small detail, small mistakes like when you're fleshing a bird, you cut a hole in him, or okay. cutting them. You know, it, it's not anything that you can't fix unless you invert the bird and pull his head off. Then you got a problem. Oh wow. Yeah, but that's not very common. But but it happens. So, what happens when uh, something like that happens? I mean, do you, well, you call the customer and say, hey, look, no, screw no, up? No, you can actually put it back on. Okay. It just takes. It takes. Uh, it, it's a mistake. It's for not as profitable. It's not yeah. as sure. Yeah. It you. just takes more time and straightening out what you just messed up. You ever make a mistake where you call the customer and say, look, I screwed up. I'm going to give you money back. No. No? That's good. And had that yet. I hope not to. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> a bad, well, it's a bad time to start 30 <laughs> years in. Yeah, yeah, 30 years in, yeah. But we have had we we have called them when when there is something hey we need to change your pose we need to do it. Do you ever regret going into taxidermist no. business? No, mm. wish I'd have done it sooner. What you do before this? I was a uh, foreman for a lumber company. Okay, mm. and then before that, I worked in the grocery store like eight years. So and you just you just are you married? Yeah, are you? Okay. I see you see you're not wearing a ring there. So no, no, we don't. You don't wear a ring in taxidermist business? No, I don't wear rings at all. Oh. I don't have one on either, by the way. <laughs> ring was. I, I, I bet I, Earl does. Oh, yeah. I left. I'll I leave the house without it. I'm in he, trouble. He didn't talk about her cooking today earlier. So he's <laughs> yeah, he threw her under the bus earlier. He's in trouble, I guarantee it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure she sees this one. He's not He's not going to be able to hang out with his friends no more. Yeah. <laughs> My boat's going to be on any uh, time out with ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's catch right. too much fish. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, so how long have you been married? Um, how many times? Oh. <laughs> Add them up. <laughs> it's a collection. Oh, I get it. I get it. You make mistakes, but... Uh, oh, got, you do make mistakes we, in marriage, huh? Oh, yeah. We <laughs> I I get, hey, yeah, he is not going to mess your duck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, might not pick the right woman. I, I, I want to <laughs> get your duck right. <laughs> I, I got one now that's good, though. It's 14 years in this one. And, buddy, she can cook the wild game. Yeah. That's she what's can, up. That's, she, you kill it, she can fix it. I hear you. I get you. Got to ride good. that one out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does a uh, does any of it gross gross her out? Like, does she not want to no. see it, or she just? Ah, oh, that's cool. She's she's right in the middle of it. She's out out there with us. Uh, uh, she sees uh, the break. One, probably the nastiest looking thing you see is when you're on a fleshing machine fleshing a bird out, degreasing the bird. Yeah. Uh, that can get pretty nasty, but doesn't bother her none. The older I get. Everything grosses me out, kind of. Like, That's gross. I don't want to deal with that. But uh, I got some duck mounts at the house, and I noticed they're getting a little dirty. What do you recommend uh, on how to keep in your mounts clean after getting the mounts done? Well, I'd take a feather duster. Okay. And, and a feather duster a couple times a year. It's just a little bit of low maintenance on them, and uh, it, they'll, they'll look good forever. But yeah. 90% of the time, mounts are hung on the wall and never... That when they're hung on the wall, they're forgotten. They walk by, pass, and look at them, and say, "Hey, that's my duck I killed right there." Yeah. And if you was to ask, when's the last time you took it down and clean it? Uh, uh, don't know. <laughs> we could agree to that. <laughs> we can actually agree to that. <laughs> we got some. We got some dusty animals at the house. You know, you got to look up. That's a lot of money on that wall up there, and you ain't gonna clean it none. Oh, my God, come on. Yeah, we, yeah, we got some mouths to house we need clean for sure. <laughs> oh. But the bet you know. You. You all right? Came out of nowhere. Uh, he heard Dustin and got I, sick. Yeah, I, <laughs> I alert you to that. So the, uh, the, water, the, up there. the waterfowl, the life on it, as long as you take care of it and clean it, it lasts forever, stays looking good. Because, you water. know, some mounts kind of, not necessarily deteriorate, but they can start to age and get dull. And There is a little product you can use to help kind of shine them up. But if you stay on top of it, you won't need that. You I know, got even, you. You know, bl- yeah. Put a lot of them to put on the wall in a hunting club. They're not put in a controlled environment. Yeah, where they're going to face uh, mm-hmm. 
stuff like moths and bugs and stuff like that. It's going to be. And, and what is that product y'all put on them? It's you a, recommend? It's, it's a cleaning stuff. I had to look in the catalog and show you, but it's uh, stuff you can spray on it, help take it. But uh, We'll put that in the link. We'll get uh, with you. It'll, it'll clean your mouth and it'll help, you know, brighten them up, shine them up. But if you don't have them in a controlled environment, you leave them in a hot club house oh, wow. all summer long. Where yeah. They're going to they're they're be areas that's going to track on them. Yeah, we got uh, some mouths in deer camp. That's that are out, really rough. That's been out in the weather and, uh, and or the sun. Yeah. One of them looks like absolute. It's a little albino. buck. He's a little forking horn. He looks albino. That's how long he's been in that same spot. I thought he was a pineapple. Sun shines through the window. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sun shines through the window on it him. Changes color. And he is set in that same spot for probably, what do you think, 20, 20, 25, 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. You move, if you move the mount off the wall there, the wall is a different color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so like, that's how long he's been there. Yeah. I like, thought he was a bino the whole time I, I was. I've told everybody my whole life growing up, like, yeah, that's an albino forked horn. Yeah. It's not. It's not why would cooler. you mount a forked horn? Yeah, that sounds like a lot cooler if you just keep it that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, who thought this well, is Well, you good know, idea? back in the day, I'm sure you, I'm sure you know this as, as well as anybody. You know, back in the day, people didn't didn't have to kill as big of deer before it was a trophy right you know yeah I mean, i'm sure over time you've seen where now people aren't getting those big six points or those you know really good eight points mounted they're like you know i i ain't worried about it no when, when they, they some of them hit a certain mark they said well i got to get bigger than this before i'm out you know yeah. first time buck or something like that or you know it's uh it's some uh, um, some kind of a memorable mount with how, a, how long somebody how long have you been mounting deer? I know we keep going back to deer. I'm it's sorry. hard not to, because that's what we hunt. You know, we, you know, we hunt ducks too, but we, we we deer hunt a lot. But have you seen the number of deer go down or up? Up, really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And in our shot, now. Yeah. So does that mean there's more deer being killed, or you're just that good of a taxidermist? Well, the number, the population is high anyway. Uh, okay. So, and then you have. A lot of hunting preserves and they're going to bring in you know like the big bucks you saw so it's uh, going up though so it's going up you know the numbers are up yeah so does that mean we're more people are hunting i think it's more people hunting i think it's a social media hunt oh, social yeah. media hunt okay you know, my buddies sense. you know that there is there's just back and forth with one another and they're like they're dangerous too you know yeah uh, so i you, got you you get something brought in from same way with ducks too yeah, more ducks. Yeah. Okay. Now the numbers on ducks every year when they come down to the hunting season might be bad in one man's area and another guy. And one guy said, like this past season, we had the best hunt we've ever had, and we got ducks we don't normally get these species of birds, but we had a great year. I'll be damned. But the numbers for us is the taxidermy part, three hundred fifty birds. That's still, our numbers are still up. I'll be damned. Well, that's yeah. good. So it looks good for us. So when you get to that three hundred fifty bird mark, do you cut it off like no. You know? No, oh, just keep going. Cause it comes in all year long. Okay, okay, I got just you. like we yeah. took birds already in. So we take you're taking birds year. already. Yeah, you take birds in that's been in the freezer. Okay, you know, I'll say, Dang, out of sight, so... out of mind, and they, it gets hot. And like, they get the. I need to put some. Uh, yeah. I need to put some my uh, garden stuff in the yeah. freezer. Yeah. Oh, Wife opens up the I freezer and say, "Get this thing out of here." Well, I got, oh, the, I got to take it to tax Yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there's a hunting season somewhere. Oh, yeah. so, so is the is the preparation for a turkey the same as a duck? You know, you feel dressed real good out there, and then you no, fold no. it up, or is it different? On a on a duck or a turkey bird, you want to bring you just want to bring him fully intact. Just take good care of him. Remember, you, the more you make, so the meat better. and everything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The meat and everything comes in on a turkey. On a turkey. I like to get a couple of turkeys mounted. Yeah. yeah. We got we got a bunch of fans on the wall, but nothing. Do you get the meat back from the turkey? Ninety percent of the time, no. Oh, that's so depressing. Now, if you got him, if you <laughs> killed him, and if you killed a local turkey bird and brought him in, yeah, we could get you the meat. But if you yeah. had him in the ice chest and hauled him around the truck, turkeys turn green starting from the. I mean, they're really quick. Turkeys yeah. will will spoil, they spoil really, really quick. fast. They make yeah. you really sick. Yeah, they will. They will. No, it's best to just write that off. Yeah, you're it is. Killing, yeah. You're getting the trouble. Turkeys, yeah. turkeys a, will spoil really fast. I mean, you got to kill it, get on ice. If you don't, yeah, it's it's a, it's a stinky mess. If that's a trophy bird, 
Chris right to meat all. I think you're going to get plenty of turkeys anyway. Nine out of ten I like the way you think. I like the way Most people eat meat in the meat. He's fridge. looking at the <laughs> – hey, hey, I'm telling you. What I like about Chipmunk – straight to the point. What I like about Chipmunk is he's going to tell you how he, how he thinks about it. You ain't, yeah. you ain't worried about no snowflakes. Or he's like, listen, he's like, hey, there's tons of turkey out there. Okay, He did not, he did not vote for Joe nah. Biden. No, no, no. He's not a Joe Biden guy. <laughs> no, he's straight to the point. He's old school. You know. We like that. Yeah, we yeah we do like that. That's I, I, like, I like the way you think. Absolutely, and this has been a, this has been a good talk. You know, I think we've all learned something here. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of people don't really know the ins and outs of the taxidermy, uh, how it works, and you know, I know more now. I've always heard it was a really gross job. It was nasty, stinky. Because you know, most taxidermists stink. You know, you walk in there, you know, it kind of smells. You know. Yeah, but they don't have to. Yeah. You don't walk in my shop and smell that kind of stuff. I'll be damned. You know, well, everything's clean. Everything's put away. Nothing, you know. Some people leave stuff and decay in the floor. That's gross. I got people coming in. Oh, uh, we can't do that. No, I got a beautiful show room. Yeah, the chipmunk, chipmunk runs a high not class. Not only this, chipmunk class. has got like the, he's got the real deal. Luxury. No, if y'all drop by, though, seriously, like that's the only reason I remember because I I go to McSwain. I used to go to uh, Old River and I lived up there a lot fishing. And I always see your shop. I'm like that thing looks like a that's the nicest taxidermy shop I've seen on the side of the road. The uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know we keep our plant clean too for the same reason because it impresses uh, people. You know when somebody yeah. walks, everybody has this yeah. stigma about taxidermy. They think, like he said, yeah. it's nasty. And then you walk in your shop and it's a beautiful showroom and it's just wow. And I would yeah. I would give you my deer just because your shop is clean. Yeah, yeah. I, I spend money with you because it's, it yeah looks because like I'm get it's a next nice. level of yeah. professionalism. It's, it's the same way know? with this boat plant. You know, like I want the cleanest boat plant on earth because whenever I'm you know, building you something and you're paying me, I want you to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand that if we take care of our shop, we're going to take care of your product. Right. Absolutely. And that's, Absolutely. that's, that's the way you're looking at it. That's so that's, exactly that, right. that's definitely awesome. That's and good. we have, we have little tours and I don't have to do anything special. People mm -hmm. can bring the first graders and second graders come. They come through a little, for a little tour. They go through the whole process. They see everything. And yes. people say, hmm, this place don't stink. And I said, they got to. Ain't no need. It only stinks if you let it stink. That's, That's right. amazing because I've been in a lot of taxidermists that it's just yeah. like, I want to puke. As soon as you yeah. walk in, you smell it. Uh, I mean, you even I in know, the show. Like I've never been in one that didn't yeah. stink really bad. Oh, you wouldn't even smell it in my place. I need to come to your place and check it out. Look at that! Look at that dog mount with the duck on it. That pinto. That's kind of cool. Is that is that is that dog mount? Yeah, I mean it's a dog holding a duck. Yeah, but it's not a real dog. Not, no, not, not a real dog, dog. But it's still cool. It'd be still cool, cool if it was a real. It's dog. cool that it's a. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I <laughs> no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be cool. It'd be yeah. kind of weird. It'd be kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, it would be weird. <laughs> There's my dog's head. I chopped it off because. Yeah, he's stuck eternally holding this duck. <laughs> you can get him fixed up and have his name tag, have your dog name put down in there, like Rover, whatever your dog's yeah. name was, and have it put down there and have a duck mount mounted. You know, you get different one, black lab, chocolate, and all that kind of stuff. So people say, well, well you know, and we even specialize in putting their name of their dog in there. Yeah. That's pretty exactly. cool. This is the details, man. It's the I details. So they'll yeah, people them. love their dogs. I might do that. They, they love, love my dog. They lose their dog, and then oh, this is my last duck that my dog retrieved. I want a special hunt. I mean, I imagine we still we still duck hunt. We don't duck hunt like we used to. We used to duck hunt every day. It was mm -hmm. probably um, 10 years ago. We used to duck hunt every day. Every day we used to duck hunt. Big time duck hunter. And my dog got shot. Mm -hmm. His name was Gunner. When he got shot, he was he was a he wasn't a master retriever, but he he's been way up there in rewards and stuff. And when he got shot, I buried his vest, I buried his, my calls, and my duck hunting went way down. I mean, yeah. I, I pretty much wrote duck hunting off because somebody shot my dog, and it was like when I went duck hunting, my dog was the best part of duck hunting. I didn't care about shooting the ducks, but I'd, I'd work him, you know. It was pretty cool. So, yeah, man, dogs are important people. You know, now I got a fishing. Dog. I just want to say, if my dog got shot in the hole, I don't know if I'd be coming out of there. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's horrible. It's oh, horrible. I'd be freaking. Uh, that's tough, out. man. I wouldn't want to be in that situation. Oh, yeah. I did. I yeah. Mm -mm. yeah, it's, it's definitely tough. Yeah, it's it's bad. Mine, Bella, my other lab, where she died, she almost got shot. Mm -hmm. Um, the dude had his kid though, and she was coming back with a duck, and uh. The kid shot across the hole, and she swam this way. In the way he was kind of angled at it, and oh, I was so, mm -hmm. so mm. furious. But I mean, you know, as a kid, so at the same time, it's like you, I mean, yeah. you can't say anything because the, the kid only, needs to know, though. like seven. Yeah. yeah. But I'm like, and his dad wasn't saying anything. I'm like, do you got you you gonna say something? Like, I mean, like her head was swimming like this, and I promise, like the kid's shot went like right in front of her head. Like she's coming back with a duck. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, I'm so. I was furious. Guys, watch out for your dogs. At that time, that was she yeah. was, she was like nine or ten. It ain't she worth was. shooting that duck. If it's no, coming no, in. no. But the lack it's a lack of uh, training. Yeah, she's Train, I mean, she's on the verge of retiring too. So you know, she's yeah. like nine or ten. You know, so I've had her. We, yeah, we hunted a lot too. Like I was like, yeah, mm. she's almost like on her way out anyway. Well, like, you get you get special bond with your dog. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, you get up early every morning with your dog. Yeah. You know, it, it freezes his butt off just like you did. Yeah. You know, and it's just like you guys really bond. Mm-hmm. Um, You're always in every problem you ever yeah. run into. Y'all are in, y'all are in together. Your hands are cold. Boat touch, breaks down or whatever. Y'all just are like, y'all down there sitting down together. People don't <laughs> people don't understand the bond between them. I mean, his nuts will get froze to the deck. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. now, like my dog yeah. got now. Like if, if she's not going, there's probably a chance I'm not going duck hunting. Well, that's right. Because I'm not going to chase a duck because that's how I always fall. Yeah, <laughs> she does all the work. <laughs> I, I, get, I get it. I get you better it. half. I get you better it. half. Well, hey, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up, but it was awesome. Mm. It was great. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. Um, it was an absolute. It was a fun podcast. Yeah, yeah. I I really enjoyed it, and I hope a lot of people get as much information out of it as we did because it was. I mean, it was very informational. Yeah, it was pretty. It was a pretty good podcast. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Well, and I got invited. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, hopefully later we'll talk about them ten pounders we're gonna get mounted this year. Yeah, we'll be we'll be at your uh, place up there with some some hammers. So come on, man. Come on, man. Got to, man. Look at this. With a bass like that, <laughs> well, I'm a zookeeper in this. We're gonna bring everybody yeah. likes them big we're bass. Bring, yeah, the retirement. <laughs> I, I, I guide you in the right direction. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, we'll settle for that. We'll settle for that. Well, well, we're gonna wrap this thing up. You guys like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. You wanna see more stuff like this? Just drop down in the comments, and we'll catch y'all on the next one.